One of the most difficult things in business is establishing a price point and asking for that price with confidence. Money is one of those sensitive topics that everybody covets and nobody wants to give out. When people get money, they want to keep it. They don't want to spend it. And your job as an entrepreneur is to understand your price point, why that's your price point, and to present other people with a valid case. Austin, why do we like to say my price is my price? I think, actually, I know that we can say my price is my price because all the work that we know it takes to be able to produce this particular product or whatever product that we have. So if you have a product, right, and you are just, I don't know, printing logos on a champion's, uh, a champion's T-shirt, right? If you're doing that and you have a price point of $200 or some shit like that, to me, that doesn't make sense because anybody can go get this shirt and start plastering people's logos on it. It's not that difficult of a thing to do. And the material, and I'm not shit, shitting on champions or whatever, but the material is clearly not something of the level of, you know, what a Tom Ford would acquire or a Gucci or a Fendi or Louis Vuitton or something like that, right? It's not going to be the same material, not the same material of cotton and, and how they, you know, sew or stitch the shirt together, the it's designs, and it's not silk, it's not, you know, not wool, you know, all of that. So it's not to that level. So you having a high price point doesn't make sense. But when you have a product that you know takes a lot of time, effort, and craftsmanship to perfect a one-of-a-kind product, damn near. And the quality of the product you know not only from your mouth, but from other people's words as well, is all said to be, this is excellent, this is great, this is high quality, this tastes amazing, this smokes amazing, this looks amazing, the labels are great, the boxing is great. All of that, the experience of even getting the product was great. All those things, either leading up to the product or the actual product itself, is phenomenal. In my opinion, you can price that shit, within reason, at whatever the fuck you want. Because you know how much it takes for you to produce that product and you know everything that went into that product and the quality of materials and the time it took for someone to actually, if it is handcrafted, handcraft this particular product. So, and this is something that I feel like we deal with in, in our communities because our communities are minority communities. We don't like to pay for shit. <laughs> we don't like to pay for shit, but we'll be the same people that will go down to Gucci and buy, you know, a $200 shirt just because it has Gucci on it. We'll go down to Louie and buy some some shades just because they have the LV on it for $400. We'll buy some fucking Tom Ford cologne. Tom Ford cologne because it has Tom Ford on it and you're willing to pay the price. But if you see some young entrepreneurs doing their thing and they took the time to learn the craft, learn the trade and how to produce a quality product maybe even using the same materials as those companies. In my opinion, of course, they may not have the marketing or the name that those companies have yet, but if the quality is there, I don't think you should shortchange yourself and sell your product like it's a run-of-the-mill average product. Because if you have something that's on the level of Gucci, but you sell it, or you have a price that's on the level of a champion's T-shirt, that's how people are going to view your product. They're not going to view it as Gucci level material, they're gonna view it as a champion's t-shirt level material because of the pricing, even though the quality and the materials used are the same as Gucci, Louis, all of that. So that's why pricing is so important because if you put the wrong price on your shit, it could literally ruin the appeal and how someone would perceive your product because it's priced too low. When you were talking about that, something that came to mind was very nice. Mm. You get to charge that price because you paid the price. Ooh, I like that. A lot of products 
when they come out to the market, you can't see the effort that it required. You can't see the time that it took. You can't see the iterations and the amount of failures that went through, whether it be selecting a material, troubleshooting a certain component, a stitching pattern, a label, or even a branding, changing an entire color scheme of a brand, import, export, taxes, understanding the legalities, applying for all kinds of things and information, getting location storefronts, working with different distributors, different manufacturers, different suppliers in all avenues. All of these things are not easy. They're not simple. In almost anything, in everything that you do in life, you're going to encounter difficulties. And if you are the kind of person who goes through that struggle willingly in triumphs, you have all the right to ask for the price that you believe within reason should be asked because it did take all that blood, sweat and tears. And that's a commodity that you're selling when you're buying a product. Some people might really think that they're just buying, you know, they're buying the milk or they're buying the water or they're buying the Gucci, they're buying the Louis, but you're buying a lot more than just that. When you're buying groceries, you're buying nutritional products, you're buying your health and your energy. When you're buying brand name things or even just clothes, you're buying your appearance and your, to a degree, your reputation. When you buy a suit, you're buying a presentation. When you're buying certain products, you're buying from a legacy. Like when you buy a bottle of Dom Perignon or Vouve, all of these things you're buying to legacy. When you buy your first Lamborghini, you're buying into a certain status, a certain caliber. It's the same thing with almost everything in life. It has a very particular meaning if you apply one some some might just be blank but you said this before austin if you want to see how people support you let's see what they do when you start your first business mm -hmm. let's see what they do when you're going through hard times in that business let's see where they are when things get rough and tough yeah and i think that somebody's willingness to pay the price that you set is a symbol of their respect for you if somebody wants to haggle and negotiate and they know the entire story behind what it took for you to get to what you have and where you got, then you clearly know their level of respect and support isn't at the level that you would deem acceptable. Right. And especially in our communities, there's a lot of people who will willingly pay the price. They mm -hmm. won't bat an eye. And there's even more people, unfortunately, who will look at you and be like, why? Why is that so expensive? I can't afford that. It doesn't make sense. Good. You're not our target audience. There you go. And like Austin says, if you have a problem with our price point, then you probably have financial problems. Exactly. You have other problems that you need to be dealing with. Because if you can't buy something, let's just say something that costs, I don't know, $28.99 or $22.99 or something like that. If you can't buy something like that, you're saying it's too expensive for a particular item, right? You have way bigger problems than trying to buy our product. You need to be getting your money in a in a in a place to where you can buy something like this or more, and you don't have to worry too much about it. And we know people are going through tough times, you know, inflation, all that type of stuff. Yeah, I understand. But again, if you're seeing something that's at that price point and that's too much for you, again, you have other problems. But We've talked about this before on a previous podcast. I can't find the number here, but basically we were talking about, you know, not explaining too much and not complaining as well. But I will say, though, be able if if someone asks, right, whether you want to explain or not is up to you, but at least be able to explain why your price is your price, in my opinion, because if you asked us why we priced our product at the price that we we did, we can give you a, a crash course as to why our product is the price that it is. And once you hear the crash course, if you're willing to listen, you'd be like, damn, you went through all of that. Damn, you know all of that. Damn, you factored all of that into building and crafting and shaping your product all for you, my experience. You did that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that price isn't too bad then. Yeah, yeah. And then not only that, but you also have to look at the market as well. Because we've seen products sell for 3x where we may price our product at. And the quality 
is lacking. It's unjustifiably overpriced. There you go. So according to us, because remember I said, if you price your item or your product too low, they're going to be looked at as shit regardless if you, if you have a good product or not, because your price point is too low. If you price it too high, and especially if it doesn't you know, hold up to the price point, people aren't going to want to buy your shit because it's ridiculously high. However, if you price it competitively as far as getting it over the lower threshold, but also not too high where people think this is ridiculous and the quality justifies that, you should be good to go. However, again, as we mentioned, there's always going to be people out there that are going to be like, man, I just, uh, I don't know. That, that seems kind of, seems kind of high. It's fine. Like Jose said, you weren't our target, target audience anyway, because one of the main things about this business is you might have a great product. However, if you don't, know who the right people are to sell it to it's going to land on deaf ears mm. so especially when it comes to pricing you might have a great product people may actually love it if they were giving it for free they'd love to get it but when it comes to the price people say people may say mm, i don't know if you're selling it to people who don't understand the significance of the craftsmanship and the work that you put in that they won't understand why that price is that price. So it's like teaching. I'm trying to figure out how to say this without being a uh, train your idiots. Go yeah, there, go essentially. There. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I'm not about to go because I just had a conversation with a girl about this. It's like, you know, I'm not going to tell certain people all the shit that Jose and I deal with on a day to day basis because it's going to go in one ear and out the other. They might even try to process it, but they're not able to process it because they don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Do they know the permits that we need? Do they know the people that we have to talk to to get those permits? Do they understand why the fuck we need the permits in the first place? Do they understand what it takes to create an LLC? Do they understand the difference between having a residential location and a location separate and what that means for your business and legalities of it? No. So why would I take the time to explain it to them if they don't get it? Why would I take the time to explain my price to someone who won't get it? Nobody, if you, if you show a person that has no interest in art or no interest in watches, a PRX or a Vacheron Constantine or a Rolex or a Tudor or a Grand Seiko or a Seiko, and you tell them, hey, it's made like this, handmade. And if you leave it for maybe more than 48 hours, or more than 36 hours, it stops working. It's not that the, the watch is broken. It's just that the energy that's conserved in the spring, there's no more energy. So that's why you have to continuously move it. You have to continuously wear it so it keeps working, all that type of shit. If you try to explain that to someone who has no interest in fucking watches, they're just not going to get it. And they're not going to understand why it's priced so high. So when you're selling a product, realize who the fuck you're selling it to. Because if you have a price point that may be justifiable, if you tell it to the wrong person, it's never going to be justifiable to them because they don't understand the importance and the quality and, and the significance of your product. Find the people that understand that, then selling them that product for that price will be a hell of a lot easier. And I think this segues perfectly into one of the quotes that I despise, but I think it has utility. And it's a fad nowadays. A lot of women like to say these, oh. this particular quote, and that's, oh. know your worth. Ah. Ah. He's broke, know your oh, worth. Oh, lovely. Oh, you deserve this, know your worth. Mm. Oh, I know my worth. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what they say. Mm. The funny thing about this statement is I agree. I do. I don't like it, but I think it's I think it's very valid. Know your worth. It's misconstrued and taken out of context oh, and stretched sure. a lot for sure. because the caveat here is there's a precursor to know your worth and that's earn your worth, know your worth and then show your worth. Mm. If we are selling our products 
We know our worth because we earned it and we can show that. We lecture people and consumers in our field on our product who have been working in our domain for an extended period of time because we developed our product from zero to the shelf. Every single step of the way, we know exactly what's going on and we know for the most part, all of the variables that contribute to it. Of course, we know our worth because we earned it. Mm -hmm. You only get to say know your worth when you've earned it and when you can show it. If you're a genius, but you can't communicate it in any way, shape or form, it doesn't count. Nobody knew. If a tree falls in the woods, do you hear it? The answer is we don't know. We don't. So if you were a genius, but you couldn't write it, you couldn't create any formulas, you never created an invention, you couldn't communicate it in any way, shape, form, or through any medium, you might as well have never been a genius. It only existed for you, and that might be phenomenal, but these things need to be said and shown. So if you have a great product and you have an awesome price point and you can justify it, and you can show that that product is worth the price that you're asking, phenomenal. But don't be walking around all poopy pants saying, no, you're worth, oh, I know my worth, and your worth is jack shit nothing. That's just delusion. And a lot of y'all are delusional. I'm, and I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings, but it's just the truth, Ruth. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I like to end on here, and I keep mentioning these brands and whatnot, but they're very um, useful in this particular case. So when i may not know i just may not know but when's the last time that you heard of a louis vuitton lowering their price not once i've never heard of louis vuitton sale never heard of discount never heard about promotional programs memberships and not for you but audience <laughs> why do you think that is not for you because <laughs> i know you can answer it but why do you think that is because say you have that product, right? It's supposed to be some high tier product. It's supposed to be the shit, right? Then people start complaining about the price. And you're like, sure, here you go. I lowered it by this much. Start to buy it, cool. Fast forward some years later, that price is a little steep. Cool, fine, I'll lower it again. Then you lowered it again. Then you lower it again. Then you continue to lower it. And you know what that fucking does? That lowers the value and perception of your fucking company and your product. So when it comes to moving and adjusting your price, of course, you have to look at the market. You have to see the trends. You have to see if it's actually something that you need to do because some people may be pricing their items too low or too high. However, if you have reason to believe in numbers to back you for having your price be your price don't lower it because when you get seen as a pushover people are always going to see you as a pushover no matter if you are or not if you see someone in the street do something to an old lady right and you see it you're right there and you walk right by it people are always going to view you as that guy who wasn't man enough to go do something about it or you aren't man enough to stand up in the bully stand up to the bully in middle school high school you aren't man enough to stand up to someone who called you out your name or not even do something physically in retaliation but just say just stand up to him and say hey look i don't respect that but hey, just say something back like if you constantly get pushed over and bitched people are always going to view you as that particular person and the same thing goes with your pricing. If you attach too many fucking discounts, you attach too many fucking sales, you attach too many times where you're lowering the value of your product to make other people feel better, people will never respect your product enough to pay full price because you've always shown that you're malleable when it comes to your price. So if you are doing anything, whether it comes to price or not, more often than not, Try to stick with your guns and stick to your guns when it comes to this type of stuff. Because when people see that they can push you, 
that they can move you, that they can get you out of character, then they got you. And it's hard, especially if you don't notice it, it's hard to come back from that because you're always going to feel like you need to change based off of what other people are saying. But more times than not, you as a person who's providing the product know what to do with your fucking product. So don't let people who think that they know just because they buy it make you change and do things out of character based off of just, you know, oh, I buy your shit, so I'm going to just, you know, make you do things and you succumb to that. No, your price is your price. Keep it that way. And I think that's a very good point because if you actually look at something and you can't hold your ground, if you stand on a foundation of sand, if you build your house on a foundation of sand, it will be washed away in the storm. Mm -hmm. But if you build your house on a foundation of rock, it'll be steadfast in all conditions. So if you set a price point and you start shifting it and you start moving it and you start playing around, nobody's going to take you seriously. Not in business, not as a company, not in anything that you say because they can't trust what you say and what you do. You don't stand on your business. You don't have a hard position. And there's a very good saying that I like. If you don't stand for anything, you stand for nothing. It's very simple. It's very simple. That's why you can't be too believing in everything. You have to have something that you defend and something that you truly look after. And it's the same thing with your price point. If you don't stand on it, if you can't say, hey, I'm not budging. Hey, there's no discounts for friends. Hey, there's no specials. It is what it is. And if you have a problem, good luck getting a better product from somebody else at a better price point for an extended period of time because they will run themselves out of business doing that. But hey... The M Club Podcast. Signing out. Mike, mic check. The AM Club Podcast.